when we used to work on this green. Uh -huh. Oh, when we get down here by the creek. <laughs> that was dangerous. Made, it wasn't yeah. even funny. It was uh -uh. dangerous. That's where I made my money. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There were snakes. <laughs> or when Reagan, that was it a rattlesnake on hole two? Oh, and you had, had your goose gun? You had the goose gun <laughs> and, and would shoot it. He had that goose gun, uh -huh. and I'll guarantee that barrel had to be that long. Yeah, it? longer than me. And how many times did you miss? It, I think I think I missed it once. And once, then, and then you got it yeah. the second time. I had to get used to that, the, the length of it. Big snake. It was a big snake, <laughs> wasn't it? Uh -huh. Yeah, it, was, it, it was surprised me when I walked up to it. But the best thing was getting the number eight. Going to Golden Chick and getting number eight. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Just remember that number eight at Golden Chick. <laughs> Extra it's, honey mustard. Extra honey mustard. With it's Pepsi. It, with a Pepsi. It's, it is the best. It's, it's a different feel. It's uh, it, it's not like being in the big city. It's small town feel. You get. I mean, everybody knows everybody. For a person that's lived here all my life, uh, I'm very fortunate to have grown up in Sweetwater. I think you've probably heard most people say about small towns is the people are wonderful, uh, and they really are. Everybody does know everybody, and it's a, it's a town of 10,000, but uh, we all are a pretty close-knit community and uh, been fortunate to be here most of my life. The main thing is it's been a great place for us to raise our five kids, and you know, it's, they've had a great experience, and they've got lifetime friends. Uh, they've all gone on and gone to different universities, and, and, but they all maintain close friendships with their, um, with their high school classmates. This is, it, this is it probably as good, of, as good a village and community that, that I've been involved with. I mean, you know, it's obviously smaller, so we can, we can all know when people hurt and when, and, and when people have losses and, 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 and when there's trouble over here and trouble. Hey, how can I help? Can I bring you something? You want me to watch the kids? You want me to... It's, 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 it's so heartwarming to know that, that everybody's got everybody's back. I guess the best thing would be the uh, friendships that you make. Um, everyone, everyone knows everyone, and so you're going to make friends with everyone, and um, it's going to be a, li a, lo a lifetime long friendship. The first memory of the twins is when uh, um, is we, got, we, we had to move to this house because we weren't big enough to, for five kids in our old house. So. One of the first things we did was move to this house right before they were born, so that we could uh, have them all together. And so ever since then, it's been a it's been a circus. It was it's always been a loud house, um, very active, kids in and out all the time, and that was perfectly fine with me. They are the two most opposite kids we have. Um, they have never fought literally maybe once in their lives that they ever we had to ever break them up um. well they're they're raised right they've got good genes uh, they inherited uh, they were uh, one that what we call the genetic lottery they did good uh, and uh, they just their parents are just wonderful they weren't brought up thinking that they were they were privileged in any sense the word pretty soon after I got here actually you know Mike was kind of a big deal I guess everybody was pretty fired up about him and and he had just come off his I guess freshman year at UNT and where he had gotten some playing time and and so everybody was fired up and, and I, w I hadn't been here long and I think spring break rolled around and and him and some boys were coming up lifting in the weight room over the break while, while I was here and and so I, I learned of the Lawrence family pretty quick. Um, the Lawrence family with, is as strong as they are in this community and everything they've done for this community and they'll be the first ones to say this community has helped them out tremendously also. Um, it's special. All right, a little back road and go hit all my favorite spots that we used to drive to with all of the buds. But we'll go see Gannon Rock. That's where, before you had your driver's license, that's where everyone talked about going and spray painting their name on there. Leaving your mark. Always just traveling down this, you brings back all the memories you had growing up and how many tanks of gas you wasted driving out here to just relax and talk about anything in the world. Because, I mean, you just had to make your own fun in Sweetwater. Here it is, you can't even see it because it's blown up. See the top of it right here. We spent a few nights out here spray painting. It's cool to see from the view that you have from 
here. Something different. It's a unique to Sweetwater. <laughs> Probably favorite memory was against Milshoe. It was our uh, second game of the year. We we're on the nine yard line and I caught a slant and took it to the house and that's was the first touchdown of the of the game and of that season at the bowl. And it's just one of those memories that you're running down the field and you it's actually happening. You're actually going to score and and uh, turn around and teammates are celebrating with you. And this is one of the things you'll you'll never forget. When you walk on that uh, that field, just you can't uh, you can't uh, you can't replace it. That's a uh, Mustang Bowl is a real special place. Well, the the bowl is a you know a works project from the, the Depression era. If you get to play for the Mustangs and you get to play in the bowl, that's pretty special. And uh, the little kids, you know, as soon as they start coming in the bowl and watching ball games, uh, they want to be you know they're waiting on their turn to get up here and wear that solid red and walk down those steps. It's it's unbelievable compared to this the places I've played in and walking down those steps that we walk down is just you hear the crowd and and it a whole lot louder than any other stadium just and you just see that the sea of red is what we call it just the, the fans that pack it so many people that have came through that have done amazing things it's just it's just cool to see that the bowl is still there and that we're still playing in it growing up in a small town or going to small high school like sweetwater our kids our kids all played every sport because in a small school they pretty much need you and West Texas is special to me because it's where I grew up. Um, I think it's I think it's hard nosed football out here. I think the kids out here are tough, um, just from some of the conditions that they have to play in and, and grow up in. You know, it's it's hot and it's dry, and and you know when you have to put on a you know 20 pounds of pads and and go through two a days and this stuff, it's it's difficult. And and I think it just makes a different type of kid. It it, it takes a special breed. It's somebody special that comes out of West Texas, and they want to prove to this community and to the big dogs uh, that, that they can do it. Big Mike. <laughs> I'll show you where I got about 90% of my stars from, was from you. Oh, yeah. Was <laughs> this was, your junior year helmet? That was my senior year. Oh, yeah. But I, I do have my senior or junior year stars on there too. That brings back a lot of memories there. Yeah. I can almost like sit and think to like pretty much every touchdown pass. Yeah. I threw in UK. Uh, it would have been easier for him to go to some of these other schools that had expressed interest because, you know, he would have been a known commodity. You know, obviously when you go to college, you you know, you're, you're there to get a good education. But I also think it's important that you stretch as an individual. Um, that's what I was excited for him because I knew that he had an opportunity there at UNT and that that was um, a unique opportunity for him and uh, I didn't want him to have any regrets. But it goes back to him being in my front yard and he was a small kid, he really wasn't that big, but we were playing with all the older kids and they played football over and over again and uh, just throwing the football around and I, he had that passion, but more than, enough, more than anything, he had that effort. He always gave 100% effort on whatever he did, especially on the football field. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable, you know, it's, it's a role model for our kids and someone for them to look up to and, and follow in his footsteps and, and our kids are, you know, they're talking about what he's doing on Saturdays, on Mondays, you know, and those guys see him competing at that level and, and not too many years ago he was here with them, you know, walking the halls with them and, and those things. Yeah, seeing all his hard work pay off and believing in himself and just doing it. and. Like every time he makes a touchdown, they throw up the three, two, five. So he never forgets where he came from. Like in a West Texas town, man, you don't get, you don't get uh, all like you do in the big town. You don't get like everyone coming in and uh, hyping you up. You got to work for it. Uh, you don't get uh, the big time offer. Uh, that's one thing. Like uh, like for Mike, he got the opportunity to walk on at North Texas and he uh, strived from there. I mean, in all honesty, with a, a kid like Michael, who's probably 
uh, like they said, doesn't have the measurables at that point. And you're looking at a school that's going from going to the spread. And we thought with Michael's work ethic, this is a place, you know, this is a place for him. Just, there was never a doubt in my mind that's where he needed to be. But to come from a high school hero and then to go all the way back to the bottom of the pile and work his way up, I think is a tremendous accomplishment. I was proud of him. I, I mean, I knew he had it in him. And I knew he could do it. If, if, if anybody could do it, it would be him. Just, you know, said, hey, if it happens, it's great. You deserve it. But, you know, if it doesn't, that's okay, too. We didn't want to have him put on that extra pressure that, you know, you got to have this scholarship. But, um, yeah, it was, it was an exciting day. And um, he called us up, and we were so excited and proud for him. It was just a, an amazing, fun experience, and you could just tell that he was, uh, he was really proud. And uh, I asked him, I, I said, so uh, what'd you do you know, with your first purchase? What, what was your first purchase? Oh, yeah, when, socks. <laughs> <laughs> when, he did, when, when he had his own money, we, we had him on a budget, so yeah. he was on a tight budget before he got his scholarship. It was very important for him. I think that scholarship meant to him that he was truly belonged. I think, you know, as a walk-on, all walk-ons have that, you know, a little bit of chip on their shoulders that they don't, they never really wanted me. I'm just trying to prove myself and I'm never sure. And I think that that proved that I belong, you know, at this place. It means a lot to this community. Um, anytime you're in a town this size, a small community, when you get a kid that, that makes it at that level, uh, it's a big deal. Uh, he knows that the community's behind him. You know, uh, he's, it's not just Michael Lawrence playing for North Texas. The, the, the Sweetwater community, everybody that's been associated and tied to this program and this school and this town, uh, they've got on a North Texas cap, a North Texas shirt. Mike is a genuine, genuine human being. He's, he's, he's the nicest guy. He's gonna, yes ma'am, no sir, he's gonna hold the door. I mean, he's, he's a genuine human being that everyone loves. <laughs> Most proud of him about? It won't be football. It won't be football. We, uh, there's too many other things in life than football, but it's, uh, it's gonna be about who he is and uh, where he came from, those type of things. He's always got a good attitude. I mean, no matter what we're doing, what he's asked to do, he's always positive. Sorry, <laughs> it's hard to talk about him. I wish we had more kids like him, that's for sure. I think that he's, deep down, he's very sensitive. And I don't think he shows that outwardly. He is a, he's a tough little kid, but uh, he has a soft spot for lots of people. I mean, you, you, we've heard him you know, express concern over things that I wouldn't think that back then when he was an eight-year-old, uh, he, you know, he would sound a little bit unlike uh, any kid I've ever known, but he, he has a soft spot for lots of kids. And the way he, he, he feels for people and the way he, he treats people, that's the most proud. I couldn't care if he catches another pass. College is stressful for a student and an athlete and, and it's one of those things where you come home and as soon as you get into Sweetwater you just the weight lifted off your shoulders and you can just sit back and relax and that's one of the first things I did was go to the lake and just go fish. I'll always look back on and say hey that's one of the things I'll never forget and I can come home and and I might be stressed out and I'll come out here and, and tell JP or one of my buddies, hey, let's go out and barman hunting. There's things I'll, I'll never take for granted and it's always been a part of me. It's a, it's a humbling experience just to be able to do that with, with best friends.